that Zechariah was speechless for three days. When the Bible tells you he was speechless till, till Yahya, John the Baptist, was born. We are told that Moses was picked up by the mother of Pharaoh, whereas in the Bible it is the daughter of Pharaoh. We are told that it was a Samaritan who made the golden calf. When the Bible tells you it was none other than Aaron, his brother. We are told time and again of stories of this magnitude such as Gideon. Gideon's story in the Bible is in the Quran, King Saul having the 300 ate their water. And amazing as it is, dear friend, we discover that the word of God is true. And I would challenge anybody to study the Bible and discover that every personality of biblical nature mentioned in the Quran is more detailed and clarified in the Bible, the Word of God. All right, thank you very much. We'll take a break and we'll come right back. Please stick with us. We just had opening statements from both sides and now I'd like to come to Hussein Morrissey and Dr. Morrissey, I'd like to ask you this. According to the Bible, all of Noah's sons were saved from the flood. But according to the Quran in Surah 1145, it teaches that Noah's son was drowned in the flood. So there's a disagreement between the Quran and the Bible. But worse than the Quran in Surah 2175 says, we saved him, Noah, and all his kinfolk from the great calamity. So now you have a contradiction in the Quran itself, where in one spot Noah's son is said to have drowned, and then the other spot it says that everybody was saved, and then the disagreement with the scripture itself. You say there's no contradiction in the Quran. How would you straighten that one out? The assumption here is unfair assumption made with the presupposition that the Bible is an absolutely perfect, complete, accurate historical record which is debated within the Christian community and that anything that differs from the Quran means the Quran is wrong rather than the other way around which is a very... Oh, oh, wait, you were the one... Number you, one, number yeah, two, you, were, you made the claim that the Quran does not contradict itself. I'm still waiting for an answer. There is answer. no contradiction because when it says we saved the Noah and his people, it does not necessarily mean each and everyone and there is a rule in the Arabic language known as at taghlib that if 99 persons saved and one drowned, for example, you can state that we saved him and his people. There is absolutely Absolutely no contradiction. And in English, it says all, all. Yeah. were saved. No, no. Yeah. read it carefully. No. I Does did it in three translations. Read it Anis? carefully. No. Uh, may, I just, may I just go on uh, ahead of all uh, is a translation, not the original words. If if the Quran is supposed to be the latest revelation of God and superior, I would like for the people to listen to this. The Old Testament in Malachi 2 5 says, Let none deal treacherously with his wife. Let none deal treacherously with his wife. The New Testament says in Ephesians 5.28, he who loves his wife loves himself. The Quran in chapter 4 verse 34 admonished, admonished the, the, the men, refuse to share their beds and scourge them. He encourages the husbands to beat their wives if they are disobedient. Is this called a revelation? This is a red herring. This is a red herring. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's, 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 let me, wait, 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 everybody just hold on for a minute. Yes, wait. I can, I can control this if you'll let me. Anis, I'm going to ask that you wouldn't bring up those kinds of statements because that has to do with the revelation itself, which is another matter in terms of the morality that it's involved. The question is at stake right here, and I want to keep us on this, is the fact of the accuracy of the text. You have said that there are no contradictions. We have pointed out one. Dr. Archer, you have said that there is a problem with the textual transmission, that it is not pure. In fact, if I understand correctly, there is one Quran in Cairo in the museum there. There's another Quran in another one. I think it's, uh, where is it at? Damascus? Damascus. And, Damascus then, and, Cairo. and then the one that is commonly used. And all three are different. They all contradict each other. Now, why is that so? I mentioned in my presentation that the main means of preservation of the Quran was through memorization generation after generation. There are people today who memorize the entire Quran who can trace it generation after generation right, right to the Prophet. 
number one. But was it, only, was it only memorized? It seems no, to me no, that all only, the scholars, even only. Muslim scholars, are saying that some were written on palm leaves, some were I'll written on that. meat, yes. some I were written the, on, John, on rocks. Not, he he not that, John. I said not the only one. I said the main way of preservation was through memorization. And until today, you will find children whose mother tongue is not Arabic, young children who memorize the entire Quran from A to Z. There's no problem with that. Secondly, about the written manuscripts, the Prophet, peace be upon him, whenever any portion of the Quran was revealed, he got instructed people to write it down in the material that you described, number one. So there was one official copy, and the entire Quran was written fully during the lifetime of the Prophet. But yeah. aside from the official copy, the Prophet also indicated that he was permitted to allow some tribes who find some words difficult in the Quran to use some alternative words. And there is record of that in the book of Jeffrey himself even. Mm -hmm. And that was allowed only as a temporary way because these people were already grown up in this kind of dialect, even though it's exactly the same meaning, the same theological concept. Right, At the time of Osman, what he did actually, with the approval of all the companions and memorizers of the Quran, is that he said, instead of people differing since Islam is spread, and it doesn't make a difference whether you recite in the official dialect of Quraysh in which the Quran was revealed or others, he said it is better actually to burn those documents or these people that the uh, personal collections of people and restrict ourselves to the official document as uttered by the Prophet under his supervision. All right, hold, it, hold, hold it right there, hold it right there. Okay. The Quran translated from the Arabic by J.M. Rodwell. In oh. his preface, Rod Rod he has a different idea. He says in the copies that were made from it, various readings naturally and necessarily sprang up. And these under the caliphate of Othman led to much serious disputes between the faithful that it became necessary to interpose. And therefore, he burned the ones that did not agree That's his that caused the... His statement, not justified by history, the most important and authentic reference to the Quran that all scholars refer to is Bukhari and Muslim the authentic collection of hadith and they try to contradict, that's an opinion. In the meantime, I mentioned to you William Weir, who's a Christian missionary himself, who admitted after very detailed and elaborate analysis of the history of the Quran, that the Quran as we have it today is the same. Why is it so serious, Anis, to say that Allah cannot abrogate a verse that's been given and because, give him another one. Because, sir, it would sound like God has two Qurans in heaven and giving him one and changing his mind no, no, about the no, Qibla, no, 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 about no, this, no. about that and the other. And for this reason, you have a, a very doubtful uh, sensation that the Quran is really the word of God. When, I mean, if he forgot a verse, he's going to bring another one. Where are the verses that he forgot and where are the ones that God gave him better? All right, what, is, what do you do with this thing that you have certain things that are said and it seems, now again, please don't take any disrespect to this, but it seems that when Muhammad needed a revelation concerning a new wife, concerning uh, a war, concerning a town, concerning he didn't want to be uh, disturbed, yeah. all of a sudden he got a revelation talking to those issues. What do you say about that to a My person? My answer to that is simple. First, we take exception of saying when Muhammad needed that because that accused him of being an imposter claiming something coming from God, and we have given enough evidence in a previous program of his absolute truthfulness, number one. Number two, there is a complete misunderstanding of the so-called abrogation. The Quran gives a good example of that. When people were drinking at the time of the beginning of Islam, it was not wise or possible to try to change them immediately. So one verse came to discourage them from drinking. The other one said, don't pray when you're under intoxication. Then came another verse saying, now stop it. So this was a gradual moving of people from their drinking habits in a practical way that they can give up this particular thing. So right. there's absolutely no, if we, you go to the Bible, you find similar things. Well, let's, in the let's, Old let's, Testament, there let's, was a let's hold it right there. Let me, let me just uh, say thank you for this half hour. And there's another book by Arthur Jeffrey that has 70 I've pages concerning the so-called contradictions that's also Not evidence. contradictions, variant yes. readings. Yes. Be careful. To just, just the fact variant that there are readings. books on both sides here. <laughs> These are All right, next, next, week, no. next week we're going to talk about <laughs> what is the difference <laughs> in salvation between Christianity and Islam. I hope you'll join us then. Thank you.